Thank you for joining us for this week's Wednesday Worship at Home. My name is Chris Carver. Um, I'm the Education Ministry Director at uh, Galilee Lutheran Church. Uh, I'm in my fifth year of filling that role. It seems like it feels like it just started, but yeah, this is my fifth my fifth term. So um, this weekend was Rally Sunday. Very, very busy Sunday in our church. Um, Unfortunately, we had some activities planned for the outdoors, and those activities had to be brought indoors, which was, um, you know, good for the kids, but a little bit of a, a hindrance, if you will, for our adult Bible study, because we also began our adult Bible study this weekend on Revelation. It's a fantastic Bible study. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to, one, apologize to everyone who was there and uh, was not able to enjoy the Bible study as as richly as we should have been um, but I'd also like to take this opportunity to invite you back um, we will not have that level of disruption again this weekend um, so it's I'd like to get everybody back in there so we can we can have a very uh, in-depth look at the last book of the New Testament which talks about uh, uh, you know what to expect on what the, the way that the world is going to end so um, very helpful to have that information to know that information um, because you can start to see the signs of it in uh, in various ways and kind of want to open your eyes to that so uh, again 9 30 uh, fellowship hall Bible study on Revelation this is a field test Bible study as well which is interesting um, so we get to provide a bunch of feedback to Concordia publishing house uh, regarding the content and the structure of the Bible study and then they will take our information and make changes and edits as they see fit uh, prior to full-scale production of the uh, publication rather of the uh, the Bible study so very cool stuff so again Saturday morning 9 30 revelation for the adults if you have a child between uh, kindergarten and uh, middle school we have uh, Bible studies going on at the church as well uh, so please please you're, you're all invited please come along please hang out with us please learn about God's Word it's not just what we do here on Saturdays and Sundays and Wednesdays and our Tuesday and Wednesday morning devotionals and our Friday prayer time there's more to it so um, I didn't really understand that until I got involved in a, a very good Bible study many years ago and uh, I've, I learned quite a bit from the extra time that I then was able to spend in the Bible. Great, great stuff. So I'm um, going to hand it off now to Mr. Rob Banger, who's going to open us up in this week's Old Testament Canticle.
my strength and my song, and He has become my salvation. We begin this week's service as we begin every week's service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was, cru was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We conclude our opening with Martin Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would also forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. So this evening's scripture reading is uh, from Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19, and this section is titled, Jesus Cleanses Ten Lepers. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers, who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said them, and he saw when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this week's catechism lesson, I wanted to just kind of focus on the area where I sit on a weekly basis and, and share with you guys. Um, as you can see, we even have still a couple, couple little tomato buds kind of made their way and then became sun-dried tomatoes before uh, too long because of the heat over the last week, week and a half. Um, and sitting out here in God's creation, that's, that's what I love uh, about this ministry. Um, you know, get the opportunity to just take and sit and go to different places. I haven't done that in a while. I should do that again. Um, but uh, go some different places and, and do our uh, do our recordings for our, uh, our worship at home on a weekly basis. And look, luckily, we have a catechism lesson all about creation, which is the first article of the Apostles' Creed. So um, as we're sitting out here in beautiful creation, we have the sun shining, got some cloud cover today, which is making it nice and cool, a nice breeze. Um, looking forward to all of these leaves changing color and then falling on the ground. Um, more so changing color than the falling on the ground part, because then they fall, then I have things to do. So stay in the tree, but turn pretty colors. <laughs> I know it doesn't work that way. That's my hope though. So anyway, um, yeah, so the, um, the first article of the Apostles' Creed, which is about creation. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason, and all my senses, and still takes care of them. 
He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does only out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. So now I'm going to hand it off to me for this week's devotion. Before we get into this week's message, let's join together in a brief time of prayer. Heavenly Father, bless your word wherever it is proclaimed. Make it a word of power and of peace to convert those not yet your own and to confirm those who have come to the one true saving faith. May your word pass from the ear to the heart, from the heart to the lips, and from the lips to the life that as you have promised, your word may achieve the purpose for which you send it. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, Nola just kicked the, uh, the tripod there. So, no ma'am. I've, uh, I've been disrupted by uh, one of my creatures that dwells on my land that I've been blessed with by the grace of God. So, um, we'll just refer to her as Crazy Dog and leave it at that. But no, she's, a, she's a good girl. She really is. Um, and each time I say something about her, she comes back and wants more pets, which is fine. Um, but this week, um, this week was a weird week, and I'm not going to lie. Um, like I told you about the in the intro the, this week, uh, Bible study on Revelation. It was it was a blessing and um, a little bit of a mess, but uh, overall, the the takeaway and is that it's very good information. Um, very good intro so far, and again, it's all field test material. So this is stuff that we're looking for feedback on. Um, and then Monday we had the 9/11 Patriot Day. Um, yeah, 22 years ago now, and every year I sit down with Ari and. Not the big ones, because I mean, the one's not here, and she's in college now. But um, I sit down with Ari, and we, and we watch the, the programming that is shown on the History Channel every year. And whatever your, your theories, takeaways, whatever, on 9-11, it was still a very somber day. 3,300 people lost their lives that day. It was a bit of destruction, a bit of evil in God's creation. And what we saw after that was a, a tremendous amount of pain, very much like we saw in our, in our reading tonight. Um, in our reading tonight, we get to hear about the 10 lepers. And the 10 lepers were healed by God. They were healed by God, not because of Jesus' desire to show what it was that he could do, that wasn't his motivation. His motivation was not selfish. It was selfless. His motivation was to, because they called upon him to the glory of God, he shared his love with them and healed them because he had the ability to do so. It was his creation. He knew how to heal it. He told them go see the priests, follow the Levitical law, go see the priests, show them that you've been cleansed. And as they went, they were cleansed. They were healed. Their bodies were restored. And so after after 9-11, we had a, a tremendous um, calling of people coming back to the Christian faith, a, a tremendous amount of prayer time, respect for God, uh, across our entire nation and across the entire world because the, the, what happened on 9-11 didn't just impact New York City. Uh, it, it impacted many people all over the world. Uh, one one uh, show that we watched the other night, which I had not seen before, um, on Discovery was talking about some various people who were in the World Trade Center's uh, various floors, and most of them were uh, from England. So... 
That day did not just impact America, it impacted the world. And we saw a, a, a turning of people coming back to God, looking for healing, looking for some sort of normalcy in a time that seemed very, very abnormal. I mean, a lot of the world changed September 11th, 2011, or 2001. It did. Again, we can debate for better or for worse. Um, that's not what, what I'm doing here. I'm simply pointing out a fact. And so our devotion this week talks about the, thankful, the thankfulness wrought by the Spirit. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, writes James in chapter 1, verse 17. The word every is no exaggeration. Everything we have and are and have been given to us is by God, which not only include those things that have to do with the body and the life, but also those things which have to do with the soul and eternal life. It includes those great gifts which we are quick to acknowledge and those seemingly insignificant gifts which we often overlook. Above all, it includes the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord, who loved us and gave, us, gave himself for us. All that is ours, whatever it may be, is given to us freely by God, without any merit or worthiness in us. For this reason, the Holy Spirit moves us to give thanks in all circumstances according to the will of God in, G in Christ Jesus for us. So that's our intro this week. Now, it talks about every and all. Who, was, who would be thankful that 9-11 happened? I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are some people out there in, in, in the world um, who would have on 9-11 been celebrating and were celebrating what, what occurred that day. Um... But out, out of that, like I said, a lot of people returned and turned back to faith. A lot of people turned to God. A lot of people came back to him looking for healing. And we, what we know, based on the scriptures, we, we see in tonight's reading. We know for a fact, regardless of what we feel about anyone on that day, um, not, I'm not talking about the, the, the hijackers or, or anything. I'm talking about the people who were on the planes, the people who were in the buildings at the Pentagon, at the World Trade Center, on the plane that crashed in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. What we know about them is there were many of those people on those, that plane who were not afraid to die, who had faith in Christ Jesus, who knew what God has promised to them. Didn't just know it, but they're confident in it. They have the hope that is what that is that when we talk about the, the hope that is within us, that is exactly what we're talking about. It's that ability to know that if I die today, if my life were to end in the next 30 seconds, will I get to eternal life? And the answer to that question is yes. We get that gift from God through our faith in him. That faith was restored in various ways to many people that terrible September 11, 2001. Many, many people, again, came back to the faith. People that had turned away for a long, long time were coming back to worship God, to glorify God, to extol him as their creator to recognize him in his righteousness to praise and to glorify him not because of what had happened but because of what had happened to us as a people in the days afterwards again 9-11 it was an awful day September 12th was a different day September 13th was an even more of a different day. September 14th was still a little bit even, even more different. And they were different for reasons because people were turning back to God. People were not afraid to go in the streets and share their sorrows and pray. 
People were not afraid to ask God for help and healing. People were not afraid. This nation was not afraid to ask God for his help in healing us. We're in a different place now. That's the, I mean, that's the, that's the God's the honest truth. We are in a different place. We, as Christians, are in a place of knowledge. We are in a place of understanding. We are in a place of study. We are in a place to know that we are saved by our faith alone. And that's a very powerful place to be in. Um, I have some friends of mine, and I'm going to... They, they post silly things online. The silly things that they post online are not very... Uh, not very reflective of my beliefs. So I really don't pay their a lot of mind to, to their posts because they are friends when I have conversations with them. The things that they post online are not necessarily representative of who they are as a person. But I have a, a, my one friend, his, his wife, uh, she's very, very, very faithful. He is, he, he's just not. He, he's not, he's been, he was raised in uh, a questionable manner when it comes to faith and belief and his goal is to call out anytime some Christian leader in some capacity gets arrested posts something stupid online turns away from the faith like he he calls these things out to highlight them his wife on the other hand that's not who she is. She is very much the believer. She is of the knowledge, of the information, knowing that she has been saved by her faith in Jesus Christ. So remember tonight in the reading, Jesus said to the Samaritan leper, your faith has saved you. The Samaritan was saved not because there was anything worthwhile in him, but because he looked in faith to Jesus Christ alone. He first trusted that Christ would show mercy and heal him, and then he returned to him in praise and thanksgiving. And that's exactly where we were as a country in 2001. Many of us had turned away from him, and in that moment, we all came back to praise him and give him thanksgiving for, you know, for various reasons. Whatever those reasons may be. Um... But there was, there was a turning, and there was an enlightenment. It didn't last long, um, but still, it was, it, was a, it was a triumphant time as a Christian to see, to know, and to understand that people were turning back to the faith. They were looking for their healing. Jesus gave them their healing, not because they earned it, not because they prayed for it, not because... It's, it's through their faith that they have earned what it was that was given to them. And that, that faith, that, sa that sa salvation by faith alone is so important. Still to this day, Jesus' will, Jesus will is to cleanse souls corrupted by sin. In faith, therefore, let us not look to ourselves, but to Christ alone for mercy and praise and thank his holy name for all his benefits to us. He turned himself over on a Friday many, many years ago to soldiers who were looking to persecute him. He went on trial. He was convicted of blasphemy, essentially, and sentenced to death. And that's what happened. He went and died. And he went and died for us. We didn't ask him to do it. He did it for us. He did it out of his love for us. He, out of his mercy for us, he bore all of our sins in that moment and took them to that cross, nailed to that tree, bled for us, died for us. The earth turned dark. The ground shook. Stones were rolled away from tombs. People were reunited with their family members who had been dead. Those are the types of 
miraculous things that happened on that Friday. It wasn't a day of sorrow, even though Christ's body did die on that cross. And they took him down and they buried him in a tomb. And on the third day, he was gone. He had risen. And in his rising, he had defeated death and hell for us. He has freed us from, from that burden. He fulfilled the law so that we could be reunited with him in heaven. Whether that day be September 11, 2001, earlier or sometime in after that. That's the, the hope that lives within us. That's the salvation that we know that we have. And that is the good news that we get to share with everyone. Whether times of tribulation and times of joy. So as we conclude this week's devotion, let's join together in a very, very brief prayer this week. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your mercy and forgiveness. And in Christ, Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. As we conclude this week's service, we do so by praying the psalm. This week's prayer, psalm, prayer, psalm, psalm, prayer, psalm, prayer, psalm, prayer. We'll go with psalm, prayer. Uh, the prayer, the prayer of the, 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 praying the psalm of the week is what we're going to do. Psalm this week is Psalm 84, various verses. Yes, ma'am. God, behold our shield and look upon the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My song longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wickedness. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold. Amen. That's good stuff there. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wickedness. Amen. Thanks for that psalm. Appreciate that. So, to get you guys out of here, um, that concludes this week's service. And as I do every week, I get to send you all with a blessing. It's not my blessing. It's, uh, it's the blessing that God gave to Moses, Moses gave to Aaron, Aaron bestowed it upon the wonderful people of Israel as they're wandering through the wilderness, wilderness. and then as Jesus teaches us later on, and Paul brings out in, in various writings, that we are not no longer Jew nor Gentile, we are all one believer in Christ Jesus, in our triune God, and we receive the same blessing as well, that blessing is this, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. With that, I bid you Auf Wiedersehen. Um, yeah. Have a glorious week. Enjoy this weather. Uh, this is a nice reprieve from the oppressive heat 
that we've had for the past few weeks. My poor grass, not this grass, grass out front. Um, big old patch of it is uh, starting to die. The water from the rain the past few nights has, has certainly uh, brought it back to life, thank goodness. Watching that creation happen as we go about living our lives. Um, but know that as you head off this week, know that the Lord blesses you, the Lord keeps you, the Lord provides for you, and the Lord will protect you. All you have to do is ask in his name, just like we heard in our gospel reading this week. So, Auf Wiedersehen. I'll see you all next week. Thank you for joining us in our worship service today. If you are in the Pasadena, Maryland area and are looking for a church home, we would love to meet with you and give you more information on our family here at Galilee. Please give us a call here at the telephone number below. We would love to hear from you. If you are not in the Pasadena, Maryland area, but you are looking for a church home, again, please let us know so we can do our best to get you pointed in the right direction. Thank you to everyone who helped and participated during our service this weekend. We are truly blessed to have such a generous and faithful congregation devoted to sharing the word of Jesus Christ with you. And last but not least, if you enjoyed today's service, please click the like or the subscribe buttons to let us know that you enjoyed it. Please leave us comments if you so desire and sign up to receive notifications for our Saturday our Sunday, and our Wednesday worship at home services. Have a blessed day. God be praised. Heavenly Father, bless your word wherever it is proclaimed. Make it a word of power and of peace to convert the... Let's try that again. Yeah, you're getting a little wiggy. Why are you, why are you wigging out? Huh? Why are you wigging out? You have to fit yourself between me and the tripod. Like, you can't sit here. Well, I could, but I'm not gonna. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You like that. You're a weirdo. You're a weirdo. That's right, you're gonna be with me on Friday and Saturday night. And Sunday night, because Grammy's not gonna be here. Yeah. Yeah, you'll be hanging out with us on uh, this weekend. So, kudos. I almost said Cujo's. That's not right.